Okay, thank you. Thank you, Darren, for that, for that introduction. And, and it's really nice to see so many familiar faces um, all, all around. So I hope we have time to um, talk afterwards and, and throughout the week. Um, Darren mentioned the, the whole context of SWA. And I think the thing to stress um, is, and what makes this a unique partnership, because there are many partnerships in this sector, as, as you will see throughout the week, is that this is about WASH and it's about politics with a big P. And it's about if affecting and influencing um, decision making on things like resource allocation and targeting that actually results um, in action on the ground. So the high level meeting is a key instrument um, for doing that. And um, in April um, of this year, we, we did have a high level meeting and I think it's fair to say exceeded all expectations in probably every way we, want, we would want to measure those expectations. Um, so my task here and what I'm about to present is, is to give you an idea after a little bit of sober analysis and consolidation to give you a little bit of an idea of, um, of what the commitments, the, the kind of aggregation of the commitments that were made and to get from you ideas on how, um, how we can go about uh, measuring those and monitoring those because one of the key outcomes of course um, of SWA is this uh, mutual accountability, this concept that we don't just make commitments, we actually follow up on them and, and monitor them and report on them. Um, so it's, there are parts of this presentation, it'll be very short, you'll be relieved to hear, but parts of it are um, a little bit boring in that there are numbers involved and, and detail, but it all adds up to something really, really exciting um, because it, it, I, I really do believe that we're at a, at, at a threshold and, and it, what comes after this could, could be quite game-changing um, in our sector. And I'd also like to thank um, a number of people who've helped present this, uh, uh, make this presentation or, or prepare it at least, um, including um, people who are not here, like Cindy Kushner, but Fiorella is here, who I'll rely on to answer a few questions, perhaps if you ask the really difficult ones, as well as um, Piers and, and, and Clarissa, who is somewhere, somewhere here. Okay. So I think Darren went through this slide, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but the key takeaway are the three priority areas, political prioritization, evidence-based decision-making, and then making sure that has tangible impacts in countries on the ground. So that's, in terms of participation and attendance, I think that the picture tells a story. Big meeting, possibly the biggest on focusing on WASH that uh, many people can remember. President Kufour was chairing, um, the Deputy Secretary General was, was moderating, um, the Prince, Raj Shah, Ngozi, Okonjo Iweala, the Nigerian Finance Minister, um, and, and of course our own um, Tony Lake, our own Executive Director, and many, many others. I mean, you can go through the whole list of, of, of names, but it was a, a big ticket meeting, and it, and it was um, the meeting um, at that time in the, you know, you can imagine the World Bank Spring meetings and how busy that is, and this was where um, most of the VIPs were. So that was the focus and the, and the limelight that, that WASH enjoyed at that time. Um, now it's our job to make sure that that, um, that carries through into the, um, into, the, into the very near future. Now, what we've done in, in analyzing the commitments is to separate them into primary commitments and specific commitments. And the primary commitments relate to numbers of people, the outputs or the outcomes, if you like, numbers of people with services. But of course, there's a big step between um, you know, saying you're gonna serve people and actually doing that. And, and there's a whole range of specific commitments, which is really what we're interested in, which are specific and measurable steps that people will take um, to achieve those commitments. But if we dwell on the primary commitments or the outcomes, if, um, if those commitments are honored, 300 million 
new users of sanitation. Um, we, we will have 300 million additional people with access to sanitation and over 200 million additional people with access to water. Now, a big proportion of that came from um, Ethiopia and Nigeria, who had very ambitious targets, big countries with ambitious targets. Um, and in addition to, the, to, to, to governments making commitments, um, two key donors to the sector made very, very specific um, results-oriented commitments, the UK um, and the Netherlands. So this is where it gets potentially boring, but this is actually meant to be a really exciting slide because this is how the analysis of the commitments. And you can see at the bottom the three priority areas, political prioritization, evidence-based decision-making, and national planning. And within those, we've further subdivided them into um, subcategories, um, if, if you can read those. But I think the key thing um, to note are that there were about 400 specific commitments, about 350 from, um, from governments. And, and these are the specific commitments from governments aggregated in terms of numbers of countries and numbers of commitments. And there were, in addition to this, about 50 commitments by 11 donors. So let's focus on the political prioritization part of the the, the commitments. Um, so on these, in terms of increasing finance, seven countries committed to disaggregate um, budget lines. Now, this is a very, very process-oriented step, but it does, it, it is a fundamental bottleneck um, in the sector that we can't even um, quantify, for example, the kind of money that a government puts into sanitation. Um, before we can even say whether they're putting in enough or not. Um, so so it, is a, it is a very tangible and measurable step. Um, nine countries prioritized WASH in national development plans, and six countries committed to increase um, uh, very high-level political um, advocacy and commitment, um, and that's at head of state level. And then there were a number of countries that committed to very specific steps on partnering with the um, private sector for leveraging further resources. Moving on to the evidence-based decision-making. Um, we had a number of countries committing to the strengthening of monitoring systems. Um, three countries will introduce joint sector reviews. Ten countries will improve information systems, um, and three donors uh, committed to, to supporting, strongly supporting um, both national but as well as global monitoring systems. Um, we had five countries around transparency of financial flows. We had five countries improving, uh, committing, making specific commitments to track financial flows, um, and three countries to formalize mechanisms to engage a wider set of stakeholders. In terms of evidence, um, we had a number of um, countries uh, committing to, to very specific analyses around uh, whether it's carrying out bottleneck analyses, whether it's carrying out cost-benefit analyses in, in, in that particular context. Um, and we also had uh, seven very specific commitments on linking monitoring to, um, to decision-making. I'm rushing through these because I think you can see from the, from the flavor of the, the, what's on there that, that they were very um, measurable um, commitments that have the, have the potential of, of making a huge difference. Moving on to the national planning processes. Um, we had 31 of the 37 countries. Now, this is quite incredible if, if it gets carried through into action and monitoring of, of an accountability, but 31 of the 37 countries made commitments around improving uh, national planning. So very specific commitments on how they would imp improve national planning. And the Netherlands and USAID um, announced specific initiatives uh, or specific support for the um, National Planning for Results initiative.
In addition to that, there were specific commitments around decentralization of services, um, and, and that's around making sure funding goes down to the, the, the right level, as well as um, the, uh, the local government being empowered um, through legislation and policy to do um, what they need to do to make sure that the poor gain access to services, as well as building the capacity of institutions um, to deliver that. Now, there were also cross-cutting themes. In addition to the kind of number crunching and specific commitments, there were cross-cutting themes emerging. Um, sanitation emerged as a major priority, particularly in relation to eliminating open defecation. Um, I think the exciting thing is that this is something that is within our grasp. Um, where a, a difference can, a huge difference can be made, and particularly in, in high burden countries where uh, levels of open defecation are very high, um, a big difference can be made um, over the next decade or so, or perhaps even shortish time frames. And I think that's one of the issues that, that really came out. Um, our own executive director basically called for a, a, a big push on this, and, and, and we ourselves are um, working very hard in, in UNICEF to try and to, to respond to that very specifically, but others also um, did, did mention this issue. So this came out, elimination of open defecation came out very strongly as an issue, if you like, of, of, of the, the, the high-level meeting. There was also a two other key broad-based issues, one around sustaining service delivery, and the other around equity. Um, understanding and targeting um, the causes and effects of inequalities um, and getting a lot more evidence around it was one area. I mentioned open defecation, um, but also uh, using the private sector and, and, and making use of resources available um, from the private sector. Another interesting one was around climate change, and, and if you like, looking, looking forward, the, the, the challenges of climate change, looking into the future. So, um, I did mention 400 commitments, that was a lot of analysis and a lot to go through, um, and a lot to aggregate. Um, but I think it's important, because one of the things going into this meeting that, that I was very worried about, and particularly as um, you know, UNICEF helped to convene the meeting and that was hosted at the World Bank, I was very sensitive to criticism that you know, this is just a meeting. So I think uh, it's really important that we realize and, and we tell ourselves and tell others that um, there was a whole process leading up to the meeting, country by country, countries prepared for the meeting, as you well know, or many of you know. Um, and it, it acted as a catalyst, if you like, to move things at country level. But the real test is whether this makes a difference at country level. And looking forward, that is our challenge as well, um, that we take these very specific commitments. So, so we have that. It wasn't just a meeting. Lots of people and lots of very important people made very important commitments uh, to each other. Um, as not to mention to, to millions and millions of poor people around the world. So these are the words of President Kufour, but basically, you know, we need to make sure collectively that we do what we say, what we said we will do. We need to monitor whether this is being done, and that's what I think subsequent session uh, presentations will deal with. And we really, I mean, this is a unique opportunity. This has given us huge momentum um, across the political spectrum. So we need to make this count. We need to use this partnership um, to make sure that this momentum is maintained, both amongst global decision makers, but really country by country. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the task ahead of us. And um, thank, thank you very much for, for listening.
Thanks, uh, thanks very much, Sanjay. That was uh, that was really good. Um, it was a it was a very concise and uh, maybe uh, maybe a little bit too quick on the on the commitments. And and so we've got a little bit of time for for questions on that. I think it was a really good review of why the high level meeting per se was important and how it makes uh, it provides space and makes uh, makes a difference. It provides momentum. Um, I think, as you said, Sanjay, it, um, it will provide momentum and an opportunity across the political spectrum. And I think that's really uh, how we should be viewing uh, the, the HLM uh, uh, as, a, as an opportunity. Um, I think that what we'd like to do is to see whether there are some questions on Sanjay's presentation or on uh, the, the slides that he had put up. Um, they were done in, in sort of rapid order fashion and there may well be uh, additional points for clarification that the group wants to, to take right now. So I'd, I'd welcome uh, hands or thoughts or comments on Sanjay's presentation and for Sanjay to respond to those. Comments and questions? No need to be shy. It's a small group. Okay. Peregrine, do we have uh, a microphone at the front, please? I'll put your head above the parapet sometime. I think there's a bit of a tectonic shift with this focus on open defecation free countries, which is coming through from uh, other presentations as well, and from the sort of post-2015 um, work that's been done by the JMP um, group. The focus of SWA up to now has been very much on the sort of majorly off-track countries. But if we start focusing on open defecation free countries, that shifts the focus a little bit. There's an obvious very large country which is not, um, you know, hasn't really engaged big, uh, particularly with SWA, but is, you know, has a real issue with open defecation free, the numbers. So I just wonder whether in the sort of, um, the wish to politically engage, whether this focus on open defecation free, whether we've thought about whether that, whether the shift in focus and means that we need to shift our focus in terms of countries that we're going to focus on to be partners for SWA. Thanks, Peregrine. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily i mean when we i guess when we say off track um you know the question is off track for what and i so i don't see a complete contradiction between um focusing on countries that are uh, have high levels of open defecation and countries that are off track i know exactly what you mean i mean you you've got right up there in terms of numbers india and indonesia um and you could argue well that's middle income. Um, they haven't engaged as much in SWA. Indonesia did uh, was represented at a very high level. Um, I, I mean, I, I can't speak on behalf of the whole partnership. I can speak on 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 behalf of, um, of of UNICEF and say I think those countries are very important. I think uh, open defecation is a huge marker of uh, inequity, which is another theme coming through. Um, so I think it is a, it's, a, it's a challenge that the, the, the partnership, um, you know, has, has to address. So you're right, it, it, does, uh, it, it does show an evolution um, rather than a change of track. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Sanjay. Are there, are there other questions for Sanjay uh, on his presentation? I'll take one, one here. Any other questions? Let's see whether we can get any more. Okay, well, I, I have one additional question. I wonder whether you could talk a little bit about, uh, after this question, a little bit about the monitoring process uh, that the Secretariat will be leading and whether you can just flesh, flesh that out in a, in a little bit more detail. But if you could also introduce yourself um, before you sure. ask your question. Hi, um, Rob Hope from Oxford University. Um, my question sort of relates to the monitoring question that Darren's already raised to some degree and this idea of mutual accountability. I mean, one of the big questions in the sector, as you've alluded to, is the actual monitoring and understanding 
how well services are delivered, not on a sort of um, a census-based data collection, but in real time in terms of on a daily basis of people getting those services. What mechanisms do you envisage or are being thought through to actually deliver on that mutual accountability so the circle is completed on that process? Okay, um, on the monitoring of, of these specific commitments, so, so I mean, I'm, I'm, this is a good introduction to um, Clarissa's presentation, as I understand it, because what we have in, in the sector is a, is, a, is a fairly complex monitoring landscape with a number of different instruments. Um, so we've got the JMP that monitors output, um, you've got glass that, that monitors um, inputs, you've got um, fantastic pieces of analytical work like the, the, the CSOs and, and as they're rolled out um, elsewhere. And so you've got a lot of um, bits and pieces that form part of the jigsaw. I think the key principle, and, and not a lot, I mean, we, we haven't, not a lot of decisions have been make, made in terms of how we will monitor 400 commitments or whether we will monitor 400 commitments. Um, but I think the key principle is we don't want a separate monitoring instrument um, for SWA. What we would like um, and what we should achieve and what the sector needs to achieve is to make sure that using the current instruments, both global as well as national monitoring, because a lot of these commitments are national commitments. Um, and if the process has worked well, you have a country process leading to a commitment being made at the high level meeting, um, which inevitably should have had some thinking into how that commitment should be monitored at a national level. So basically, I think the answer to your question is, A, you know, it, it's not decided or signed and sealed. So that's where I think a lot of input is needed. But the key principle is there shouldn't be a separate monitoring instrument. This should be data that's gathered through existing instruments and existing instruments should perhaps be sharpened up to be, enable us to do that. I think that kind of covers your question. Yeah. OK, um, thanks very much, Sanjay. I think we should uh, give Sanjay a round of applause again for uh, his presentation on the HLM. <laughs>